You may have never heard of Lawrence Lepard. He's a man that remains in the shadows of financial media, appearing on various experimental outlets like Kitco News and Stansberry Research. As one of the most radical voices in the industry, Lawrence claims that the monetary and political system is hopelessly broken and that it's only a matter of time before we see a dramatic collapse. In today's video, we explore his thesis and look into one of the most outspoken and extreme opinions out there, one that goes beyond finance and explores the possibility of a collapse worse than anyone could have ever imagined. While apocalyptic predictions are nothing new, this one specifically focuses on the financial and political entities that have created a situation where the only fix is a harsh reset. The argument that society is breaking down, abused by the modern day version of the bourgeoisie, is something we have all heard. However, how this ties in with markets, $2 million Bitcoin, gold, and the demise of the US dollar is an explanation I'm going to leave for Lawrence himself. Here is the basis of the argument explained to a reporter from Kitco. Take a listen. Well, I mean, look, to, to your point, Larry, mankind has debased fiat currencies throughout the years. I mean, right. there was a time right. when uh, even uh, the Portuguese escuta was the leading currency yes. in the world. Yes, I mean, there's, and... there's, there's, this is not something new in history, as, although, you know, Keynesians would have you believe that, you know, history doesn't matter. But, you know, I mean, Voltaire said it, you know, a couple hundred years ago, you know, all fiat money eventually returns to its intrinsic value, zero. <laughs> but what <laughs> triggers this? What well, triggers this collapse? Yeah, I mean, I, I like to say this is, you know, this collapse is, the sound money people are the, are the guy who jumped off a building and said, you know, I can fly. And, you know, he's passing the lower floors right now. I mean, what triggers it is eventually the compounding gets so large that, that mathematically it just doesn't work. I mean, we create more and more debt. That creates more and more interest that's due. And, and so you have to continually print more and more. And, and so it's a psychological factor that once people realize, I mean, it's, it's, there's a law for it called Gresham's Law, named after Sir Thomas Gresham from the 1600s, basically that says, once people realize, hey, this money I've got, it's not gonna be worth as much tomorrow, they will do everything they can to spend it on either a good or something they think will be worth more tomorrow. And in my belief is that those two things are gonna be gold and Bitcoin. As you just heard, the foundation of his argument is centered around history. Every single fiat currency that has ever existed eventually failed. The US dollar has lost more than 98% of its purchasing power since the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. This trend will never reverse, and its demise is not a question of if, but rather a question of when. That may sound dramatic and overblown, but unless economists have discovered a miracle, this is the path we're headed down. Now the great question is when. After all, do we care if this meltdown happens 100 or 200 years from now? The real concern is the medium to near term. As Lawrence stated, there is evidence emerging that we are quickly approaching the end of this cycle. The basis of this argument is the compounding effect. When you increase a number by a percentage each year, the amount can quickly grow out of control over the long term. Take for an example M2 money supply. This may sound boring and unrelated to what we're talking about, but M2 is a great measurement of how reckless a central bank is. It's the size of the money supply that includes cash, checking deposits, and easily convertible near money. In 1980, it totaled $3.1 trillion. In 2020, it totaled $15.4 trillion. That's a growth rate of 82% every decade. And to make matters worse, by the end of this year, it will be $21 trillion, a 36% growth rate in just one year. So put that all into a spreadsheet and assume a conservative 82% growth rate every decade, and you get this. By 2040, the M2 will be at 70 trillion. Sadly, this doesn't mean much to anyone, as these numbers are just too large for any human to follow. But unless there are massive changes, this type of exponential growth will lead us right into a disaster. We are already seeing the trust in the dollar erode. Once people realize that the money they have is going to be worth less tomorrow, they begin to spend it on goods or something they believe will be worth more in the future. This is why prices are jumping up and people are naturally flocking to anything and everything that isn't cash. Look at housing, which is seeing values grow like never before in history, or stocks, which have done nothing but go straight up in the last two years. Once people wake up and realize that this transitory narrative is false, that is when the inflationary loop begins. At the beginning of this ordeal, surveys revealed that most people did believe it was transitory. Now the tables have turned. Even prominent billionaires are coming out stating that this is unsustainable and will lead us to disaster. Carl Icahn famously went on CNBC and gave this statement just two weeks ago. Take a listen. Does the market look better to you today or, or not? I, you know something, 
and I'm not being facetious here. I can't answer that question. I will tell you this. I will tell you this, that as far as I'm concerned, the uh, market one day, and I believe one day in the long run, and I don't know how long it is, and I, don't, I think you have to be a fool to try to tell you how long it is in this kind of a market. In the long run, we are certainly going to hit the wall. And I get everybody, people may say to me, well, anybody can say that. No, but I really think there will be a crisis, the way we're going. The way we're printing up money, the way we're going into inflation. I, I mean, if you look around you, you see this inflation all around you. And I don't know how you deal with that in the long term. But if you're asking me even what's going to happen in the next year or next two years or three years, I think it is foolish to try to answer that question. I, I honestly think that, you know, this money, uh, this MMS stuff, uh, is working to some extent. They keep printing up money. The money goes out. And up to just recently, you haven't seen inflation. Now that you see inflation, you have to worry. So there you have Carl essentially admitting that a disaster is looming. The only problem is that no one has any idea of when it will happen. That may sound cliche. Predicting a downfall will eventually come, but inflationary disasters are extremely hard to time. Take for an example Weimar Germany, which saw hyperinflation and the complete collapse of the Deutsche Mark. This is the ultimate historic example of a currency apocalypse. You may think that at the same time their stock market fell through as well. But study history and you'll find out that the German stock market flourished from 1922 to 1924. And this isn't just through the prism of the failing Deutsche Mark. It also flourished based on US dollars, meaning that despite a complete disaster had you invested your money in German stocks, you would have had very positive returns. So what to do? From an investment point of view, how do you protect yourself? Well, according to Lawrence Lepard, you're going to start with this. But, so but, what do we do about it then, Larry? <laughs> For people listening to you, well, from Watching, an investment point of view? From an investment perspective, Happy to answer that. what can an individual do yeah. to protect his or her portfolio? Well, first off, let's, let's talk first principles. Bonds are the worst investment in the world right now, by a huge measure, because they're going to lose their purchasing power. So it's a very easy call to get rid of all your bonds, in my opinion. Okay. Um, from there, I think you start thinking about what are sound money alternatives. Obviously, some people have chosen housing. It's not crazy. I mean, houses will retain their value. You can live in them. Um, I, you know, I then go to gold and silver coins. I, I specialize in picking gold and silver mining stocks and have done okay with that. And then I think Bitcoin is an emerging form of sound money that's very important as well. And millennials love it. And, and I like it too. I, I'm a very big Bitcoin fan. Um, but I think you, know, you need to move some of your assets into something that provides you with inflation protection. Okay, so there you have Lawrence advising the masses to buy real estate, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. This is very unusual to hear from a sound money guy. Typically, those with this investment ideology are anti-Bitcoin. People like Peter Schiff, as an example, would likely agree with 95% of Lawrence's opinions, crypto being the exception. But before I reveal that price, a quick word from our sponsor, Masterworks.io. The Fed has been printing trillions of dollars, which is leading to record-breaking inflation levels. With all of this uncertainty, investors are looking for different ways to outperform the market, or more importantly, ways to hedge against the same inflation we spoke about in this video. What if I told you there was a way to do both at the same time? There's an overlooked and historically consistent investment billionaires have used to not only grow but also protect their wealth for generations. It has outperformed the S&P 500 by almost threefold from 1995 to 2020 with nearly zero correlation to the stock market. This may shock you but this asset class I'm talking about is contemporary art but only the richest individuals in the world had access to this exclusive investment. Not very fair if you ask me. Well, that's all changed thanks to Masterworks. With Masterworks, you can now invest in the same type of art collected by Bill Gates and even Jeff Bezos. Masterworks acquires paintings ranging from $1 to $25 million and securitizes them, providing investors like me and you access to this previously exclusive asset class. Setup with Masterworks takes just a few clicks. You just visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and you can instantly diversify your portfolio with one of the oldest and most stable assets around. If you would like to take advantage of this and invest in some fine art as well as support the channel, then please click the link in the description below. Thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to Lawrence. Where does he believe Bitcoin is headed? The answer may shock you. Let's get your outlook on Bitcoin then. 12 month outlook on Bitcoin. 12 months Bitcoin will be north of 150 for sure. 
For and, sure. All yeah, right. And I'm, I, I feel strongly about that. And then five years on Bitcoin, um, somewhere between a half a million and two million. It'll be very, you know, Bitcoin is is hitting that inflection point in the curve. You know, Malcolm Gradwell's uh, inflection point, mm -hmm. a tipping point. Bitcoin adoption appears to be about 10%. And you know, you look at all these other innovations, and there's a chart. You look at all these other innovations and how they get adopted, and, and kind of when they hit that 10% level, they tend to accelerate. You know, cell phones, the internet, whatever it might be. And Bitcoin reminds me a lot of the internet. And so when you when you hit that tipping point, things tend to get going quicker. So there you have Lawrence essentially arguing that Bitcoin follows the S-curve adoption path. This is essentially a theory that breaks global adoption into stages along a growth cycle. Innovators. Early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggers. When new technologies are introduced to the public, there tends to be a rapid acceleration of adoption right around when it penetrates 10% of the market. Many in the Bitcoin community claim that we are right around that point in the adoption curve right now. And looking forward, we're going to see a massive acceleration of growth in the coming five years. This is why Lawrence believes that Bitcoin could potentially hit a price of $5 million. When the curve flattens out, this will be the sign that Bitcoin has been adopted fully as a true store of value. Its volatility will plummet and the potential outsized gains from investing in it will diminish. Whatever you may think, nobody can deny that we are swimming in untested waters. And what will come of this bizarre monetary experiment, no one can guess. As always, thank you guys for watching and please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed.